Football is an interesting sport. The better you are as a player, the more critics circle you, because what people love more than a hero is to see a hero fall. Currently, nobody best describes this sentiment than Arsenal's Bakayo Saka. It was only two seconds ago that fans and critics alike started to suggest that the Englishman might be washed up. However, they have yet to maintain the same energy in the face of his resurgence. Bakayo Saka has been one of the most prolific players for club and country in the last couple of years. Considering he plays in arguably the most competitive league and for a country with highly coveted positions, his 16 goals and 15 assists contributions in 35 games make him one of the most informed players in the world at the moment. Add to that his stunning goals and cordial relationship with the fans, and you start to get a Thierry-esque picture of the 22-year-old. Perhaps that's a reach. But what spurred this electric form? How did the Gunners man come to be one of the most reliable names for club and country? For that, we'll have to go down memory lane. I give you the scary truth about Bukayo Saka that no one seems to be noticing. Bukayo Saka, born on the 5th of December 2001 to immigrant Nigerian parents in Ealing, Greater London. His name, from his native Yoruba descent, translates to adds to happiness. Gunners fans can agree he's lived up to that name. Saka's introduction to football began at an early age. His family are huge fans of the sport, and a young Saka was quickly engulfed by the magic of the beautiful game. This interest soon turned into a passion to play, which his father picked up on and registered him into a grassroots football academy. And so, Bakayo Saka's foray into football began. His first academy was local side Greenford Celtic. Then he trialled for Chelsea and Tottenham, but failed to catch the eye. Ultimately, he'd resort to the Watford Youth Academy, where he blossomed before his dream move to Arsenal at just seven years of age. People think the Gunners forward is great now, but he was just as exciting in his younger years. Although he's one of the smaller players on the field currently, he grew bigger for his age grade at the academy level, but that didn't have any impact on his talent whatsoever. If anything, it made him more unplayable to opponents. In fact, his under-16 coach remarked just how talented Saka was, stating, Bakayo always stood out. In the younger teams, he was a fantastic decision maker. He knew when to beat people and when to pass, as well as having brilliant physical attributes and a really good character and personality. Is it any surprise that Saka is currently a fan favourite at Arsenal or an EPL player with a growing fan base? People always comment on how much of a good, nice guy Son is. But he's not the only Mr. Nice Guy in London. We can make a pretty solid case for Bakayo Saka as well. In a sport full of egos, these players stand out as some of the more down-to-earth people. And if his great character doesn't do it for you, well, you can take away that he's been brilliant and a key part of Arsenal's resurgence under Arteta. If you need any more proof of just how much of a key player the Englishman can be, you only need to hear what his under-12 coach Luke Hobbs had to say. Hobbs told an interesting story about Saka. There was a Premier League futsal tournament. As the league coach, I took the group that weekend. I had 10 players and would literally put on five for the first half and then the other five on for the second half and give everyone an opportunity. I didn't see it as a win at all costs thing. So we did that and we got to the final against Chelsea. I put Bakayo's team on first and then took them off at half time with us winning against Chelsea. Obviously, they had a good team too and they brought it back to 3-3. And I remember thinking, if I want to win this, I need to put Bakayo back on. So I put him back on and before you know it, he made it 4-3, then 5-3, then straight into the top corner, 6-3. They couldn't get the ball off him. So we lifted the trophy and had a nice journey back. I remember that moment well. But despite him winning the game for us, there was no arrogance at all from him. That just sounds like something straight out of a movie, doesn't it? Bukayo was meant to be a star. You heard the man. Despite being a prodigy and excelling beyond his years, Saka kept his head and continued working towards his goals. The older he grew, the more he became determined to play in the Premier League. This led him to train under Arsenal legend Freddy Jundberg, who developed the growing talent into an impeccable player year after year. And then it happened. It was the 29th of November 2018. Arsenal were in the Europa League. The then 17-year-old came on in the 68th minute to replace Aaron Ramsey in the match against Vosca Poltava. Arsenal may have gone on to win that match, but things were far from rosy for the North London club. It had been 14 years since they last won the league, and their record in Europe was nothing short of laughable. The team was constantly getting humiliated and booted out of every European competition. Although Saka's introduction into the first team didn't immediately turn the Gunners' fortunes around, it marked the start of the Englishman's rise at Arsenal and how he came to be a crucial part of Arteta's project. So, while Arsenal had no identity and struggled to dominate under Unai Emery, Bakayo Saka was one of their better players. Nothing best describes his meteoric rise in an Arsenal shirt than when the Gunners faced off against Frankfurt in the Europa League. 
Saka received a pass from outside the box, cut in and bent it into the corner for his first goal for Arsenal. It was like something out of a movie. Anyone who watched Thierry Henry play could have sworn the Arsenal legend possessed Saka that day. For the next three years, the four dutifully carried the club, contributing with 23 goals and 29 assists across three seasons. Arsenal even made a gamble with his development, deploying him in several positions. But that didn't deter the youngster. He kept delivering and performing in whatever role the manager assigned him. For example, in 2019, following injuries to key players like Tierney and Kolasinac, Arteta, deplo Arteta deployed Saka as a left-back. Anyone seeing the youngster play for the first time could have easily mistaken him for a full or wing-back. It wasn't unusual for wingers to make the jump lower down the field, though. For example, both Ashley Young and Antonio Valencia arrived at Old Trafford as wingers, but left as defenders. We've also seen the transition from back to front, with the most popular example being Gareth Bale. That said, despite being deeper and out of position, Saka remained an unstoppable force for the Gunners. He endeared himself to the fans with his determination and soon made the left-back spot his. One of his best showings from that position was in the fourth round of the FA Cup, when Arsenal faced off against Bournemouth. Saka finished the match with an insane goal. He started a tiki-taka pass move and capped it off with a belter into the top bins. If that wasn't enough, he provided a silky assist that helped push Arsenal into the next round as the game ended 2-1. In the post-match interview, Mikel Arteta expressed his admiration for the youngster. I think Saka represents every value that this football club stands for. He's come through the academy and earned his respect with hard work and accountability. And you can see the progression that he's having as a player, but as well as a person by this time. Bakayo Saka would continue to thrive under Arteta, eventually cementing his place as one of the first names on the team sheet. His performances earned him the Arsenal Player of the Season accolade twice in a row, including the 2021 and 2022 campaigns. At the national level, Bakayo Saka has been a revelation for the three Lions. In a team stacked with quality from one position to the next, with the likes of Jude Bellingham, current Arsenal teammate Declan Rice, Harry Kane, Phil Foden and so much more. Saka has been consistently called up to represent England. Compare that to top performers who are regularly left out, like James Madison, James Ward-Prowse, Fakayo Tomori, Ivan Toney and so on. Even when he fumbled on the biggest stage, like when he missed a penalty at the Euros in 2021 and suffered racial abuse, he remained calm and collected. He could have easily lost his cool, and justifiably so, but he kept his head down and kept pushing and working on his game. The result is two England Player of the Year awards. He's barely out of his early 20s, but has already beaten many stars on the much-coveted award, despite his heroics for the club and country and winning several individual and club trophies. The looming question is, can Saka guide Arsenal to their first league title in decades? The Gunners catapulted in the final stretch of the previous season, narrowly missing out on ending their EPL trophy drought. Although some expected the club to unravel the season, they have continued to press and are now second below City by two points. Arsenal look like genuine title contenders, and it would be silly not to consider them likely to win it. With Saka fit and raring to go, the Gunners might just cause the biggest upset of the season and win the trophy, ruining Liverpool fans' dreams of Jurgen Klopp exiting the club as a league winner. Then again, only time can tell.